Hi folks and thanks for joining me. You can see I've got the Crosley 718B back here in the chassis stand. Matter of fact, it never left the chassis stand. But uh, weather has, uh, cold weather has moved in and uh, doing any cabinet work right now is uh, on hold and it may be spring before I can get back to doing any type of uh, cabinet work. Uh, real quick, Mike, one of my uh, viewers of my uh, videos, he uh, was kind enough to uh, send me a few tubes. I had mentioned uh, weak tubes and uh, Mike sent me some nice uh, tubes here to uh, replace my uh, defective tubes here in the uh, Crosley. So uh, Mike, again, thanks for your kindness, sir. I appreciate that. Um, real quick, uh, Greg's Vintage Workshop. Uh, Doug Mosley just uh, did a call out on uh, Greg's channel as well. I'll put a reference here to that in the description, but you guys uh, check out Greg's Vintage Workshop. He's been doing some uh, really cool work uh, for a while now on vintage radios as well. And uh, you'll see some neat stuff that he's worked on and restored, and um, also some projects he's currently working on. One being the uh, AK-55C, and uh, Greg reached out to me, and uh, he's noticed some high voltages on the plate of the uh, tubes, and the purpose of this video is just to talk about that. You may see some high voltages here as well um, on the Crosley, in addition to other radios that folks are working on. Again, if you're going to do any voltage measurements on radios, uh, like others have said, you need to make sure that you're uh, trained and have the knowledge to do so safely. So if you, again, elect to uh, follow my practice here, you're doing so at your own risk. So take note of that. I have a, a modern day fluke meter that I'll use here. Again, it's a 27 FM. And uh, this particular meter has an input impedance of around uh, 10 meg ohms. So what happens typically um, you'll notice higher plate voltages than what's called out on the schematics from back in the day. For those out there that have earbuds or headphones on, you may notice a little pop. So just take note of that here before I connect my uh, lead here to the plate. And you can see I'm reading about 125 volts. Now if you go over to the uh, picture in picture I'm showing, you can see that's north of what was called out on the schematic. But if you go back here and look at the schematic itself, you'll also notice that uh, the way they measured the voltage back in the 30s, they used a, a voltmeter that had a, a thousand ohm per volt uh, reading or input impedance. So that impacts, of course, the uh, voltage readings that we would get here as compared to a modern day device. So in this case, for this particular uh, radio here, a uh, 500 volt scale was used. So to emulate that or somewhat mirror what was done, I can hook up a uh, 500,000 ohm resistor and shunt between ground and my positive lead here and actually uh, make those uh, measurements and retest the uh, plate and you should see a voltage drop that should get us closer to what's called on the schematic. So well, let me grab a uh, resistor here, hook it up, we'll remeasure the uh, plate voltage and uh, see if that is indeed the case. So again folks that have earbuds or headphones on just take note You'll probably hear a louder pop now because we're loading the circuit more. So uh, just keep that in mind here when I attach this. See if I can hold it on there steady just for a moment. You can see the voltage did drop to uh, what 96.8.9, so 97 volts. If you go back and again reference the uh, measured voltage it's called out on the schematic, that's a closer match. So. You can see again how the loading of the uh, meter impacted the uh, voltage readings as compared to a modern day multimeter that uh, has a higher input impedance. So, Greg, if you're watching, what I would do for the Atwater Kent 55C, I looked at the documentation quickly. I can see that a uh, 1000 ohm per voltmeter was used. 
I did not see reference to what scale was used, but based on your B plus voltages, I would assume maybe the 250 scale. So what I would do is uh, start with a uh, 250,000 uh, ohm resistor and uh, use it in the shunt position like I um, demonstrated here. And repeat your uh, measurements on your plate voltages and uh, see if they're closer to plus or minus 10% based on the uh, input voltage that was called out in the day using your variac. And uh, if they fall in line, then bring your voltages up to modern day voltage of uh, 120, 121, whatever it is for your area. And uh, see if that still keeps you within, uh, you know, plus or minus 10%. And then, of course, remove the uh, shunt resistor and uh, just ignore the uh, voltages if they're uh, higher than, uh, you know, 10% at that point in time. If you need to take another step, of course, you could mitigate the issue uh, with a uh, power resistor to uh, decrease the uh, loading. And there may be some other methods and procedures. So uh, that's what I would uh, check first. That's what I typically uh, do. When I see these high voltages, I go back to the documentation, just check and see what meter was used, and then I do a shunt resistor to somewhat mirror what was done and make sure that my uh, voltages stay within that plus or minus 10% uh, of what's called out on the schematic. So I hope you guys uh, found that helpful. Again, uh, if you uh, repeat this process, just make sure you got the uh, knowledge, education, training to do so, or do so at your own risk. You guys uh, take care. Thanks again for uh, watching.